in this video I want to tell something about the so-called uh, gas filled lamp. And then especially I mean the incandescent lamp. Of course we know now that the incandescent lamp is more or less obsolete. Uh, we now have LED lamps, etc., etc., light emitting diodes, gas filled lamps, etc., etc. But uh, this is an old article of the Philips Technical Review of 1963. So, quite a long time ago, anyway. Say a kind of overview about 50 years of the gas filled lamps. And when, the, when they are talking about gas filled lamps, they don't mean, as far as I know, uh, TL tubes anyway. Uh, the gas filling of the lamps was very important regarding all kinds of, say, strange uh, phenomenon. Uh, and say more or less bad things that were uh, found when developing the tube. The, sorry, I mean the lamp. So, um, I leave this as it is so that you can read it. There were, say, uh, quite a few, few problems when making incandescent lamps. Uh, one of the most impor important problems was the blackening of the tube inside the glass bulb. Uh, there were many, many reasons for that. And you can read here, for instance, uh, about the uh, uh, first ideas of making incandescent lamps with say a kind of carbon wire, carbon filament. And we know, I skip a little bit, we know uh, that the carbon filament took up, takes up in those days, a very high current compared to the lamps where, say, the filament was made not of carbon, but uh, much later of other materials. So that's what this article is all about. Uh, they are talking about a half watt lamp and with half watt in those days in the Netherlands to uh, say um, the 1920s they meant that the uh, new filament uh, took up half of the wattage of the old uh, carbon layer, carbon filament, anyway. Perhaps an interesting video to see uh, uh, when, say, the carbon filament lamp was no longer um, seen as a good uh, idea because it took too, uh, too much current compared to the light that was sent out with that uh, carbon filament. Um, they used other materials and especially tungsten and here you can see in that uh, magazine of Philips how that tungsten uh, material was made. Uh, tungsten by itself had, say, not too good properties, and then I mean it could not be melted because uh, the the melting temperature was much too high. So the, it had to be sintered, and here you see that sintering process uh, where they in the uh, Philips um, factories try to make a filament out of that tungsten material. And this is, I think, a quite good video. Sorry, a quite good picture. Heating up, hammering it, 
hammering it, pushing that, uh, say, the crystals of the tungsten through a uh, diamond uh, tube and then, say, uh, getting out a certain uh, wire that could be used for these lamps, incandescent lamps, of course incandescent lamps. And when we are talking about incandescent lamps, always very important is that uh, there were many problems. Say, the heat developed inside the lamp, around the filament, the gas layer uh, around the filament, and they finally found out, as far as I could see, you can read it here when you have time, Also, the Langmuir invention, very important, by the way, uh, when you have time, uh, that uh, the that there was a certain there were certain properties regarding the filaments when it was in that glass tube. Sorry, in that glass bulb. And um, when there was, as far as I could understand, a, a kind of um, gas hanging around the filament, so that there was, um, in a certain way, a, a transport of heat out of the filament to the outer side of that incandescent lamp, uh, when it was filled with gas, uh, compared to the situation where it was a, a glass bulb that was uh, a complete vacuum, and well, that were all the problems to be solved. I read this uh, yesterday, etc., and I found it very interesting. Uh, well, here again about the black deposit consists of carbon, uh, but finally it proved to be not, say, uh, that the idea, the idea was originally that it was carbon, but it was not. It were, say, tiny metal particles out of that lamp, out of the filament of that lamp, that's what I have to say. And here we have, uh, say, when evacuating the lamp bulbs on the pumps of the, the last traces of water vapor were removed by a liquid air trap in the pump. See the Dewar flask roughly in the middle of the photograph. Uh, they say they found out that traces of water had, in a certain way, a deteriorating effect on how that incandescent lamp worked. So, all traces of water had to be uh, evacuated. Well, here again, uh, well, anyway, uh, let's go to the next picture. That's, that's perhaps very interesting. You see, say, the top of a lamp that was, say, mounted in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands, in, the, in 1914. Uh, and they find out at Philips that the good, say, the good or the best idea was uh, to uh, make the filament glow on a low voltage but a high current. So there was here a transformer immersed in the leads hanging over the streets, by the way, where we had here this uh, uh, press down transformer that translated uh, 220 volts to 14 volts. And uh, that was, of course, very interesting. You see that these lamps, they were hanging in Amsterdam in 1914, approximately 1914. 
uh, with that uh, say step down transformer here inside well I think it's very interesting how they uh, try to solve all these problems in those very very early days of the incandescent lamp uh, by say uh, paying attention to the gas village inside such a lamp uh, the power supply applied to the lamp etc etc anyway so uh, I've lived in Amsterdam for approximately 30 years and I know of course this street anyway the Kerkstraat in Amsterdam uh, well let's go perhaps to another picture uh, here is say the factuur what we call in uh, the Netherlands the factuur to from Philips in the Netherlands to the uh, Amsterdam uh, government where they uh, told how all the say all the lamps that were used there and applied there and about the costs perhaps so here we have the what I told earlier a uh, half watt lamps etc etc the half watt lamps uh, say took up approximately half of the wattage with their uh, say tungsten filaments compared to the uh, wattage that was taken up by the um, carbon filament anyway here more about these lamps perhaps interesting to show I only have 15 minutes on my camera so I oh, now I have only three minutes anyway perhaps it's interesting and of course because it's Engli English American you can read it everyone can read it so here again uh, a much smaller bulb could be made because of say that lower emission of metals inside that lamp when the heat of course when the filament was heated and this is also very very interesting these are say measurements and photographs of how the filaments inside these lamps acted and in terms of recrystallization so structural of a wire of pure tungsten after recrystallization that's A here's B the offsetting in a tungsten filament occurring when a lamp having a filament with a structure shown in A had burned for some time so say in a certain way the filaments say that crystallized matter uh, say uh, slopped down in a certain way and that of course uh, could uh, cause many problems anyway further developments about the filament and I'm surely searching for pictures so recrystallization texture of a tungsten wire containing impurities resulting from the better sea process anyway I don't know what the better sea process is I have to read that article again anyway but say in general the recrystallization was a kind of problem because then the wire hardened and could say burn out more easily finally finally they found out this co coiled coal filament for a 100 watt lamp um, it was coiled and that uh, could give out much more light compared to the current that had to be uh, that had to flow through that filament uh, well My camera will stop suddenly I will go on as far as I can get 
test uh, test board of all kinds of lamps in those days. There were say hundreds, perhaps even thousands of different filament lamps, incandescent lamps. So I, I will stop it now. Thanks for watching again this beautiful picture of all these different incandescent lamps. I think it's more than enough. Thanks for watching. Wish you luck.